getting started with Counting Us, the point-in-time count mobile app developed by Simtech Solutions. In this video, we'll cover how to access Counting Us, registering for an account, and joining your local account. We'll also provide an app overview, and we'll take a look at some of the different surveys. Counting Us can be downloaded from Google Play or the App Store from Apple. It can also be accessed online at counting.us. Now let's see an example of downloading Counting Us on an Android device. You open up the Play Store and search for Counting Us. You can hit the Install button, and then once it's finished installing, you can open the app, and then you'll be directly on the home page, where you can either log in if you're a returning user, or register for an account. For everyone using an Apple device, the steps are quite similar to what we've just shown. Simply open the App Store, search for Counting Us, install the app, and then open it. One of the key features of Counting Us is that each survey that is submitted is tied to a specific location. The easiest way to do this is to enable your location settings. Otherwise, you'll be prompted to enter the address for each survey that you submit. You may see a screen like this that appears either the first time you're opening the app or the first time you try to set the location of a survey. Please do allow that permission so that you won't have to enter the address for each survey. Now that you've downloaded and opened the Counting Us app, the next option will be to register for an account if you're a new user. Once you tap the register button, you'll be asked to complete the following information in order to register. We ask for your first and last name, your email address, which becomes your username, your cell phone number, or the number which you can be reached at during the point in time count itself by your local account administrator, and then you can create your password, confirm it, and submit your registration. For those of you who are using our volunteer portal, instead of registering for an account through Counting Us directly, you should sign up through your local community's portal. By registering through that portal, you not only would create your account with Counting Us, but you would also be added to this year's activity. If your community is also using our Regions and Teams feature, the region that you volunteer for is the one that you'll be added to as well. For those of you who did register through the volunteer portal, or for returning users who have forgotten your password, you'll want to use the Forgot Password link towards the bottom of the screen. On the next screen, you'll be asked to enter your email address and then hit the Submit button. You'll be sent an email with a link to set your password for the first time or reset it if you've forgotten it. Now that you've registered for an account and set your password or reset it for the first time, you're ready to log in. You'll enter your email address for your username and then enter your password and hit the Login button. New users will want to hit the Choose Count button. On the following screen, you'll join New Count and type in the setup key provided by your local administrator. These are unique to each year and each community and how we keep your surveys tied to your local count for this year. Then you hit the Join Count button. If you see a list of regions, you can either select the one you're volunteering for or skip it. And then you'll be confirmed that you're counting for this year's count. If your community is not using our Region and Teams feature, then you'll be simply directly connected to your local count activity. Returning users will follow a similar process. Instead of hitting the Choose Count button, though, you'll be using the Change Count button. You'll also need to tap the Join New Count button and enter your setup key provided by your local administrator and then tap the Join Count button. Again, you'll have the option to either select your region or skip it for now. And also, if your region is not using that feature, you'll just see that your count has been changed 
and you're now counting for this year's point in time count and you can tap OK. After joining your local count for this year, you'll want to tap the Get Started button. Here you'll be on the main menu for Counting Us. Across the top is a yellow bar that indicates the app is currently in test mode. That means that any surveys you submit are considered tests and you can go ahead and practice as much as you want. When the count goes active, this bar will no longer appear and you'll know that the surveys you submit are being included in your local point in time count results. Below that are lists of surveys that have been added to your count activity. The options you see here might be different. It depends on what has been determined as being needed locally. To access a survey, you would simply tap on any of these buttons and you'd be taken into the survey. We'll go through an example of that in a few minutes. Along the bottom, we have some different tabs as well. First, you can see your drafts folder with an indicator icon showing you how many drafts you still have saved here. You might want to save a draft if you are no longer connected to Wi-Fi and you don't want to use your mobile data. Or if you're in the middle of an interview and you get interrupted and need to step away and then come back and continue completing the information. In both cases, the drafts will be here in this folder and you can just go ahead and open those up and select the survey that you would either need to submit or continue working with. It's important that all drafts are either submitted or if they shouldn't be included, you can go ahead and remove them when you're done counting for the point in time count. Once a survey is submitted from your phone, you no longer have access to that information and it will only be accessible by the count administrators in the regional command center. After the drafts tab is the map tab. On this map, you will be able to see your location as determined by the GPS of your mobile device, if you've turned on your location settings, or if you're using the desktop version, it will use the IP address of your internet. Under my count, you'll be able to see a running total of the surveys that you've submitted throughout the night or morning of the count. You'll also be able to get a drafts reminder for those that are ready for submission or if you still need to review and complete drafts. For communities using our region and team management feature, you'll be able also to see your current region assignment. If you haven't yet been assigned to a region, you can contact your local administrator to see where you should be counting. And then finally, we have the help tab. This has some general information about the point in time count as well as information about some of the surveys you may see. You can use this as a resource if you get confused about which survey you might be wanting to use, as well as instructions about individual and household surveys. In the upper right hand corner, you'll see three dots. If you tap that, the sidebar menu opens. First, you can use your account button to update your account information if this has changed since you registered. It's important to have your most up-to-date contact information here as count administrators will use this information if they need to contact you during the point in time count. Also on the sidebar menu, you have the option to sign out of Counting Us, and you can also see the version of Counting Us that you're using. Please do make sure that you check the app store of your mobile device to make sure you're on the latest version of the app. Now we'll go through some examples of the surveys and how you can navigate those. On our survey screen, we'll again see the list of surveys that have been added to your local activity. The known location survey is used for pre-count planning to help determine local hotspots for your community. This is an optional feature and might not be used by your community. To use the known location survey, if you tap on the button, you're then asked to confirm your location. Again, this will use the GPS of your mobile device or the IP address of your computer. It should center on the map with your current location. If you do need to make adjustments, you can drag the map around with your finger. You have the option to zoom in on this map and then you can zoom back out as well. If you've gotten a little bit lost, you can always use the pinpoint icon to recenter the map on your current location. If for some reason you don't have access to using your GPS, you may be prompted to enter an address or you can choose this option at any time. 
Please be sure to enter the full street address as the nearest intersection often ends up showing up in the regional command center as somewhere across the world. Most users will simply need to confirm their location is correct on the map and then tap the next step button. Then you're able to access the survey details. For the known location survey, most communities simply have a single question asking how many people are believed to be experiencing homelessness at this location. This is a text box field and you'll be able to enter the number by tapping inside the box and using your keyboard that will pop up on your phone or mobile device. Then you can use the submit survey button or save this as a draft if you would like to adjust this later. When you submit any of the surveys, you'll get a re response successfully submitted notification and you can tap OK. If for any reason the survey does not get submitted, you'll be asked to save it as a draft and try submitting later. Now we'll take a look at the unsheltered homeless survey. Again, we can tap the button and some communities also decide to use our optional feature of preparing the surveys in Spanish as well as English. For each survey, you will be asked which language you'd like to see the questions displayed in. After you've made your language selection, if that feature is being used, everyone is asked if this is for an individual or a household. If persons experiencing homelessness are presenting as a household and you would like to survey those together, you would choose this option. On this screen, you're asked how many people are in the same location who will be sleeping there on the night of the count, and you can enter in the number. You'll be presented with a survey for each household member. It's important to complete all required questions for each household member and then submit those surveys. They will be tied together in the Regional Command Center, and that information will be helpful for reporting. For an individual, you're simply taken directly to the set location screen. And just as we saw before, you can adjust this if you need to, but again, most users should just need to hit the next step button. In the unsheltered survey, we generally start with a question asking if they've already been interviewed for the point in time count. The phrasing of this may appear slightly differently for your local community. It may include the date of the count, for example. If they say yes, they've already been surveyed, you can thank them for their time and then hit the back button to start the process over with the next person. If they say no, they haven't been interviewed, then you're asked to find out their sleeping location for the night of the count. And again, this question may also have the date of your point in time count, depending on the features that your local community has selected. When you see a drop down arrow, that means that there's a list of options and you can only select one. Be sure that you see if you need to scroll to see additional responses that may be available. If one of the options that does not count as a literally homeless, unsheltered sleeping location is chosen, Depending again on the local needs, you may see a notification to say, thank you for your time, that's the only question I have for you today. And you can just hit the back button and start over again with the next person. If, however, the option does fall into the unsheltered category, then you can access the rest of the survey. For any of the text fields, Again, simply tap into the box and use the keyboard that will appear. For checkbox questions, you can multi-select any of the responses that are indicated. When you see the calendar icon, if you tap that, the calendar widget appears and you can scroll through each of these fields to select the date of birth, for example. And you can hit the done button. You may notice that the age and age range questions are auto populated based on this response. If someone isn't willing to give you their full date of birth, you could enter their age and then the age range auto populates. 
If they're still not willing to tell you their age, you can select from the drop-down options of the age ranges. This is the question of these three that is required and is used to determine which population this person should be counted in for the report. The survey also uses conditional logic. For example, if this is the person's first time experiencing homelessness, you're only asked to say, how long have you been homeless this time? If, however, this is not their first time, then we get how long they've been homeless this time, and then also how many months did they stay in shelter on the streets over the past three years, and how many separate times they've been in shelter or on the streets in the past three years. These homeless history questions are used to help determine if a person is, is experiencing chronic homelessness. In addition to the homeless history questions, we also use the disabling conditions questions. Again, there is conditional logic applied. So if you see that the person has indicated they have one of these conditions, the second question does appear. And in order for them to be counted in that population or as potentially chronic, you do need to have a yes response to that follow-up question. So please make sure that you don't skip that when you're going through the survey. For communities who opt in for our partnership with Miracle Messages, which is an organization that does family and social reunification, you may see this question at the end. And if someone indicates that they're willing and they want to reconnect with someone, you're just reminded to please complete the reunification survey. That survey will appear on your surveys tab in the list and you can simply select that next after you've submitted this survey. You also have a notes field if you'd like to add any additional information about the person or your interaction. And again, you have the option to either submit the survey or save it as a draft. You do need to complete all required fields in order for the survey to be allowed to be submitted. And if you've skipped any, you'll get a notification saying that you have skipped a question that's required and please go ahead and complete that. This one was successfully submitted, so we'll hit tap OK. Another survey you may likely see is the observation tally. Again, depending on your local community's needs, you may see for individual or household. You go ahead and set the location of this survey. And then you have the fields that are part of the observation tally. In addition to the other age ranges we saw earlier, we do have the options that are unknown age, but you believe the person is an adult under 25, over 25, or under 18. These will help the report determine in which population this survey should be counted. Observation tally surveys are included in the unsheltered count. You can hit the back button at any time and it will ask you, are you sure? Because you will lose all of the information you've currently entered. If you don't wanna lose that information, you can hit no and then save this survey as a draft. The sheltered homeless survey has a slightly different flow. Shelter providers are asked to identify their project type and then select their organization and then their project. These selections will stick or remain in place as long as you're in an active session of Counting Us. If the location of this provider had been entered into the command center, you wouldn't have to set your location. So if that's something you're interested in, please reach out to your local account administrator and they can contact Simtech Solutions for help with that. If your address has not been added to the command center, then you will need to select on the map or enter the address here the location of the shelter provider and hit the next step. The shelter survey generally aligns with the unsheltered survey, except we are not asking for the sleeping location as that should be the project that is completing this information. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please reach out to your local account administrator. For additional support, please email pit at